Today is episode 24 with Dr. B and the 10th Ask Dr. B Show. Welcome to the Harness Your ADHD Power podcast. If you're looking for a fresh perspective and actionable steps on hot topics from focus to follow through to self-management and more, you are in the right place. Welcome your host, innovative educator, coach, and psychotherapist, Dr. B. Hey, d dears! I am so glad that you could join me today for my podcast show. I've changed things up a bit again so that you don't get in a rut and stop paying attention in the moment because you anticipate what's coming next. A little newness keeps things fresh. Plus, this is really good training for you to not jump to conclusions or assumptions and miss something important, a common trait with ADHD. Another common trait is being very curious. In other words, having lots and lots of questions. That's definitely me, probably you too. Did you know that today's success started last night? Seriously, it did. If you got a good night's sleep, if you felt rested when you woke up this morning and you were excited about your day, then you've set yourself up for success. If you let yourself stay up late again because you felt like it and you didn't gently and lovingly escort yourself to bed, then you've got some work to do around that. With our fast-paced brains, we definitely need our sleep. What about your questions? Did you wake up with any this morning? If so, and you're looking for answers, consider sending your questions over to me so that I can answer them or find answers for you. I'd love to do that. Or perhaps your questions arise in the moment when you think about the tasks that you have to complete and you're feeling overwhelmed before you even get to them because you have questions about what to do, when to do it, how to do it, or even if you should do it. Is that you? If so, then keep track of your questions as best as you can and send them over to me so I can help you get answers and get unstuck, okay? There is a question that came up after Monday's episode that I want to clarify right away in case you were confused by what I said about my wait list in Monday's episode. I mentioned my innovative online hybrid coaching and education program, ADD Ventures in Achievement. Adventures in Achievement. I said that if you had any interest in knowing more about it, that I currently have a wait list and will be opening it up for enrollment again in August or sooner if you happen to be on my wait list. I'm generally full of surprises when it comes to being of service. To opt into my wait list and to be the first to know more, you'll find that on my homepage of my website. I currently don't have a wait list for one-to-one work, which in-person or remote via Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, things like that. So if you have an interest in knowing more about adventures and achievement, hop on the wait list. If you want to explore us working together one-to-one, then get yourself set up for a complimentary consultation, which is also available to set up for my website. I hope that that clarifies things, as I don't like leaving confusion just sitting around unanswered. That just doesn't work well for me. You know, I don't think I have ever met an adult with ADHD that didn't have questions. Lots of them. Some people have been a bit shy about asking. Others just jump right in and ask. Everybody's different. And you're welcome to ask more than one question on more than one occasion. You don't have a limit here. If you have lots of questions, then ask me lots of questions. Seriously. You'll be doing me a big favor by sending me your questions. And in case you're wondering what kind of questions you can ask me, here's some examples of what others have asked me over the years. Should exercise play a role in ADHD management? What rituals can help ADHD adults get to work on time? Is it possible to manage ADHD without medications? Your questions matter to me, all of them. How are you going to do what you want to do if your mind is filled with questions and roadblocks instead of excitement and motivation? Where are you supposed to turn in times like that? Well, one place you can turn is to me which is one of the reasons I created the Ask Dr. B format. It's not just that we're a curious bunch, although we are. (laughs) There's no doubt about that. 
you may also be sitting with huge gaps in your knowledge base and you can't move forward on what you want to achieve. In fact, you might not even know the questions to ask to get the information that you need. And wouldn't it be wonderful if someone would ask you, what are you trying to do? And you could tell him or her. And then they would ask you, do you know how to do A, B, C, D, and so on. And you could tell them what you knew and what you didn't know. And because they know the sequence and the process, they could answer your questions and guide you through the sequences of the tasks that you want to get done. I would like to be that person for you. And if you're the kind of person who needs to have all the details up front before you step into the ring and you have huge gaps in the process or the sequence of events, how exactly are you supposed to proceed? Seriously. This has nothing to do with how smart you are and everything to do with learning style. Even with ADHD, some of us are quite literal and need the step-by-step version of the story to engage. Others of us are more inferential and just jump in and kind of fly by the seat of our pants, filling in the details and the information as we go along. Either way, you need what you need, and that's just how it is. And if you're anything like me, and you don't get the answers that you need, you might just keep spinning or ruminating like I do until I get the answers I need. The entire situation can turn into one big overwhelming experience. Perhaps that happens to you as well. My very curious mind is always wondering, what's the number one biggest struggle or frustration that you're having right now so I can help you with it? I wake up each day wondering that so I can direct my energies to the solutions that you need. I really want to know. I do. And those of you who have generously shared your thoughts with me told me that you are truly suffering. Lost productivity, lost income, lost respect by the family, lost respect among your peers and clients, feelings of hopelessness, struggle, and inadequacy. That's a lot of suffering. The thought of millions of adults with ADHD suffering every day with these challenges is a painful thought to me, especially when I have answers and solutions that could ease your pain. You know, I made it even easier to get your questions over to me. Just head over to my website and you'll see Ask Dr. B in the main menu now. Just click there and ask away. I'll be notified immediately and get to work on them for the next Thursday show. And in the event that your question is outside the scope of my license or practice or knowledge base, I'll find a guest who could address the questions that you have and get them to do so on one of the special guest shows. Either way, you're going to get answers to the best of my ability to provide them. If you're a new listener, welcome. I'm honored that you're here. If you're a subscriber or a regular listener, thanks for your loyalty and for trusting me to share meaningful content with you in each and every episode. And whether this is your first or your 24th time of listening to my show, you'll hear me say time and time again that you are not what you do or don't do, that you are more than that that we are not defective or less than as people, as human beings. We're just wired differently. And the difference is actually pretty cool. Once you have answers to your questions, know what you need to do and how to do it and have the best tools for you to get it done with the least amount of stress. It's my hope that you're gonna get some of what you need here. And remember, I'm a work in progress just like you. Sometimes I'm the tortoise and sometimes I'm the hare. It depends on a lot of different factors. Sometimes I'm even a little fuzzy and I need to clear my head so I can see what needs doing and how to do it. Perhaps you can relate. Point being, I've learned a lot about myself over the years because I've been willing to be a student of my own life, to step into the situations that present themselves and learn how to navigate what I find. This has meant learning how to quiet my challenges, and there have been plenty, and make the most of my gifts, more than I ever knew was possible for me. Once I got the information I needed, and I trust that you will too, once you get what you need. 
I absolutely love my world map with the little flags marking all the countries and states where you all are listening. It is so cool. I want to acknowledge and welcome new listeners in Hungary, Malaysia, Philippines, Brazil, South Africa, Denmark, Romania, Kenya, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Japan, Sweden, Germany, Netherlands, Ireland, United Kingdom, Canada, and just about every single state in the U.S. It's very exciting to know that we are not alone at all. I'm not much of a world traveler. However, it is so exciting to know that my voice is traveling to all of you, no matter where you are on this planet of ours, that no matter where you're located, that you're listening and relating to the challenges and the stories and the solutions. I wanna thank all of you for listening, and I trust that you will benefit from at least one episode of this podcast show, hopefully more, but at least one. Knowing that you're listening and reading your reviews and emails to me makes me want to give even more of myself to your needs via this podcast and in other ways. You are a blessing to me, and your presence in my life is beyond anything I'd ever imagined. Newsflash, I created a special group for us to be able to relate on Facebook as a community. The group is called the Harness Your ADHD Power Community. Go figure. After seeing that you all are listening from so many different parts of the world, I thought it would be a wonderful thing for us to be able to come together from our many different diverse spaces and freely communicate and discuss things like focus, follow through, self-management, and other relevant topics. Just a few house rules for the highest good of the group space. Be mindful of your posts and comments. Don't spam, which includes self-promotion. Celebrate your wins and get involved. Let's support each other on this journey of becoming and living as our best self. I'd love to get to know you. Come join the group. Again, it's the Harness Your ADHD Power community on Facebook. Before I get to today's questions and answers, I have a question for you. And you've heard it before if you're a regular listener. It's about your state of mind and your wins. I cannot emphasize this enough, and I'm going to continue to ask you about your wins and encourage you to acknowledge and celebrate them every single day. I found a quote by Bobby Knight that I find interesting about wins. Most people have the will to win. Few have the will to prepare to win. That's why I encourage you to really look for your wins and then acknowledge and celebrate all of them because they lift your spirits and they add up to your success. So back to wins. I talk a lot about wins. Why? Because cultivating and having a wins mindset can actually transform how it is that you experience your life. So have you been taking the time to look for your wins, really look for them, acknowledge them, celebrate them, Share them with others who appreciate what a big deal they are for you and celebrate with you. Are you doing this every day? I sure hope so, because there's truly magic in all of this. And what do I mean by wins? Well, these are the little things that happen every single day that are good things, positive things in the bigger picture of your life. And yet they go unnoticed, unacknowledged and uncelebrated by you. It takes shifting your mindset and is totally worth it. Please don't be the person who continues to tell yourself that it's pointless to reward yourself for those things that you're supposed to do. That couldn't be further from the truth. Those are the very things that deserve and need to be celebrated so it becomes easier to do them consistently and more enjoyably each and every time. So what's it gonna be for you today? If you flossed your teeth, it's a win. If you asked for help when you usually don't, it's a win. If you finally accepted that you are more than your ADHD, that's a win. Perhaps you started focusing on your strengths and putting them to work for you, that's a win. You get the point. Celebrate all of them 
and none of this half-hearted celebrating. Mean it. Exaggerate your emotions. Yes, wow, awesome, way to go. And certainly celebrate the big wins too. It's just that they happen much less often. And so celebrating daily wins makes a difference so much faster in your life because of the frequency. Shifting gears now. Today's episode is all about answering the questions that you have about issues or challenges that you experience as an adult living with ADHD and offering you hope, real hope. How much time do we have? Not much. So let's get to it. Thanks to those of you that have participated in the anonymous online survey for today's three topics, managing yourself in time, money, and consistency. This podcast is sponsored by Pure Potential with Dr. B. You can head over to drbarbaracohen.com and find the podcast show notes, great free content from Dr. B, plus programs and services. That's drbarbaracohen.com. Now back to being an adult with ADHD in today's world. You know, there's a lot of different reasons why you have the questions you do. It's possible that you have lots of misinformation or you're missing steps or strategies or skills or a philosophy or an understanding of yourself well enough to slow yourself down, to think something through rather than rush yourself and make mistakes. Everyone's reasons are different. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here to answer what I can for you. I'm going to share each topic with you, share a little about the topic, offer my point of view about it, which includes an action step to take. Yep, there's an action step for each topic because just hearing an answer isn't enough. You need to take action or nothing changes. So don't let yourself off the hook here. You do have the ability to respond to your needs, and I hope at least one of these topics is going to resonate with you and be of benefit. So let's keep going. There were three questions on the survey. What is the number one biggest struggle or frustration you have right now? And what have you tried to solve this struggle or frustration? And what are the negative consequences of this struggle or frustration? Thank you to whoever submitted the first topic, which is about managing yourself in time. They responded, I struggle with having so many ideas and the same amount of time. I've tried to solve this with better self-management. And the negative consequence of this is that things take longer than I would like. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with me. Having so many ideas is a common trait of adults with ADHD, and it's a wonderful trait, I might add. And having the same amount of time is what we all have to work with. And not even a 24-hour day, but really a 16-hour day, because sleep needs to remain sacred and a non-negotiable that doesn't have you stealing from it to have more time. What you said you tried to solve this with is better self-management, which sounds right. You didn't indicate how that succeeded or failed, just that the negative consequence of this struggle is that things take longer than you would like. The truth is that things take what they take in the beginning, and until we really take a close look at all that we're doing and how we're doing it, we don't have any data to work with to solve the mystery of how to manage ourselves better and the tasks that we need to complete. Back to your first statement about having so many ideas. You didn't indicate whether these were ideas for businesses or just personal things that you wanted to do. Either way, there are many ways to approach this dilemma. I'll go with one example here to illustrate. First would be to do a brain dump of all your ideas onto a sheet of paper or Word document on an electronic device, whichever you prefer. Either way, you want to clearly see all of your ideas in front of you and not leave them in your head. Next, look at all of your ideas and comment on each one of them as to what you like about them and what you want to do with them and what brings each one of them to life and what would that do for you. You need this information to proceed. Then, look and see which idea in front of you would be the easiest to bring to fruition 
and the next, and so on. Make a list of your ideas in order of easiest to bring to life and make them into a sequence, meaning one right after another. Since you can't do them all at once, but you can do them as a sequence, this would be one way to get them all done. And if new ideas come up, as they probably will, if you're an idea generating add -er, you can add the new ideas to your list, again using the criteria of what's the easiest or fastest to do, and put the new ideas where they belong in the sequence. And as you said in your response to the survey, you've tried better self-management, and this really is going to be what's going to make it or break it with regard to your success in achieving all of your ideas, or most of them. You have to be able to manage yourself in time, in process, in follow through, in transitions, in completion, and so on. And in the beginning, it's going to be slower going than it is after you've established a pattern or a sequence that allows you to successfully keep moving forward. This is definitely something that can be learned if you're willing to be a student of your own life and learn what you need to learn to claim your successes. I had to learn these lessons. I wasn't born with knowing how to do so. And you can learn too, if you're willing to do what's needed. I would be honored to help you to get there if that's of interest to you. And for now, I hope my input has given all of you something to think about and consider about managing yourself within time, the time that we all have, and how to claim your successes. Transitioning to our next topic. Thank you to whoever submitted the second topic, which is about money. They responded, money is the greatest frustration. I have tried to make and live with a budget, and the negative consequence is that I keep going over budget. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with me. Having frustrations or struggles with money is a very common trait of adults with ADHD, even when they're great with math, because this is not a math problem. I know many adults with ADHD who are great with math, and yet they look at creating a budget and living with that budget, and they fail miserably. There are many moving parts to this process. Let me share a few with you. First is mindset about money and budgets. If you have a belief that having to live within a budget is a bad thing, then you're starting out doomed to fail. Living within a budget for money, time, or anything is actually about greater freedom, not restrictions and limitations. You have whatever money you have, that's the asset that you wanna manage. So to set up your budget, you need to first study your life and see where you're currently spending your money and make an accounting of what's true now. Then ask yourself, for all the places where you currently spend your money, what does that spending do for you in each of those situations? In other words, what do you gain in a feeling or benefit or attitude or whatever works here? Let's say that you spend money on concerts but don't really budget enough for the number of concerts you like to attend, and that attending these concerts makes you feel alive and part of what's happening in music, that this is very important to you and to your well-being. So you look at your budget and you see what you can do to move things around and to allot the money that you need for the concerts that are important for you to attend. Let's say that you feel that you need to go to two concerts per month and have only budgeted for one concert a month the way your budget is right now. You need to look at your budget and see where you can redistribute your money so that you can cover two concerts a month instead of just one. Can you take a little money from other things such as eating out or other luxury items? Can you give up having cable and just get entertainment as needed to make up the financial difference to be able to attend two concerts a month? All of this making sense so far? I hope so. In other words, the life that you want has a certain price tag on it. You either find a way to afford that price tag or you have to downsize and create a life for yourself that has a price tag on it that you can afford. It's one or the other. There are no discounts on what life costs. There are only choices to be made as to rising up to afford the life that we want or reevaluating and accepting the life that we can afford now until we can afford more in the future. 
to me, it would be looking at how to maximize the life that you can have now and what you look to have in the future and what it's going to take to get that future life. The other piece here has to do with boundaries and honoring them. I'll give you an example from my own life. I found that using a debit card to buy my groceries doesn't work well for me because it takes too much time to track what I'm spending. I prefer to get cash each week in the amount I've budgeted for my groceries and put it in a special section of my wallet. I can see what I have to work with and that's all that there is. I don't get more cash. I don't use a credit card. I don't use a debit card. I work with what's in my wallet. It's a tangible. It helps me to be mindful of my spending and to stay within my food budget. I use a similar strategy with the use of a credit card. If I'm going to charge things to a credit card, I have to keep track of what I'm spending and stay within the budget that I created for myself for the spending because I have to pay it off in full when the bill comes in. My philosophy there is that the credit card company is giving me the use of credit for roughly a month that allows me to get goods and have them for a month before I have to pay for them. And when the bill comes due, I need to know that I only spent what was in the budget for credit card spending and pay the bill off in full. To do this, I have to know in advance what my budgeted amount is for credit card spending each month and only spend that amount. This means that I had to learn to manage impulsive spending and outgrow immaturity so that the little voice in my head that used to say, I want what I want when I want it, period, isn't the voice I listen to. It is not the voice of reason. I had to learn these lessons. I wasn't born with knowing how to do so. And you can learn too if you're willing to do what's needed. I'd be honored to help you to get there if that's of interest to you. And for now, I hope that my input is giving you some ideas about the ways in which that you can learn to manage money and make it an enjoyable and fun experience instead of the nightmare it typically is and claim your success. Transitioning to our next topic. Thank you to whoever submitted the third topic, which is consistency. They responded, my greatest struggle or frustration is the lack of consistency and managing my ADHD from day to day. I know in my head intellectually what I need to do, but I get sidetracked and I'm constantly justifying deviations from what I know that I need to be doing. There are a bunch of techniques that I'll use underlaid by a foundation of medication. What works on a particular day seems to be anyone's guess. Much of what I try to do involves external stimuli or reminders of how to stay on track, <clears throat> like written notes, alarms, scheduling tasks with deadlines. The consequences I experience are lost productivity, lost income, lost respect by the family, lost respect among peers and clients, feeling of hopelessness, struggle, and inadequacy. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with me. The first question that comes to mind and wasn't stated is what you are getting sidetracked with. Is it something that also needs to get done and isn't on the list or the calendar? Or is it an escape from what is on the list? This is very important information. Let's say that the deviations are important and need to get done, but for some reason you don't feel that they should be on the list or the calendar because they appear to be less important, but they really aren't. They might be important to your mood or happiness or sense of accomplishment. They might be things that need to be done and are easier and more fun than some of the other things on your list. If this is the case, I would make sure to add these deviations to your list or your calendar so they're part of the plan rather than being what gets you derailed. Also, if you don't have any fun things on your list or calendar to do each day or at least several times a week, I highly recommend that you add them to your list or calendar as well. We all need rewards and little perks to keep us going. We do. Seeing that fun things are actually planned and on the calendar can be highly motivating and provide a joyful feeling that your needs and your happiness matter. Another piece here that occurs to me based on what you provided is that much of what you are using involves external stimuli or reminders of how to stay on track. In other words, trying to make yourself do something because an outside force says that you must do it. 
it makes me think that perhaps there is some internal resistance going on and that all parts of you haven't voted yes on the things you say need to get done. My way of approaching this would be to connect with all of the parts of you that need a say in what's going to get done and how it's going to get done. By parts, I'm referring to aspects of you that all have different needs. There are aspects of you that need adventure or a challenge or variety or something uplifting or something playful. I think you get the point. You first want to learn about the various aspects of you and what their needs are. Then you want to take a look and see if you're meeting the needs of all these aspects of you. I would venture to say that you're not because there's some resistance happening when it comes to staying on track. Also, it sounds like you're trying to push yourself forward rather than being pulled forward by the energies of desire and willingness. If you don't desire to do certain things and you can't find a way to make them desirable, then there's going to continue to be a problem or resistance. I've had to learn to shift the meanings that I've given to certain tasks to make them more interesting or appealing to get done without running into resistance. In other words, find the good or the reward or the fun in doing them and what is actually in the task that is of benefit to me so I can focus on that instead of what I don't like or I don't want. Remember that what you focus on grows. And so if you focus on how bad having to do certain things is, that feeling of resistance will only continue to grow bigger and stronger. If instead you focus on what doing that task will do for you and the benefits of doing it and the return on the investment of your time, effort and energy will actually be totally worth it. Then that feeling will grow bigger and stronger. I had to learn these lessons. I wasn't born knowing how to do so. And you can learn to also, if you're willing to do what's needed. I'd be honored to help you to get there if that's of interest to you. And for now, I hope that my input is giving you some ideas about the ways in which you can learn to stay on track from the inside instead of relying solely on outside forces to push you. That's it for our three topics today. I want to thank the three anonymous responders for their topics for the Ask Dr. B format. Remember, your questions matter to me. They do. If I'm going to help make a significant difference in your lives, I need to know what your challenges are, what you're struggling with. I really want to know what the number one biggest struggle or frustration is that you're having right now. So I created a quick little survey for you. It's six questions and it's brief. The link to the survey is in the show notes as well as in the post for today's podcast episode. I hope that you'll stop by my site and choose just to take a couple of minutes to respond to the survey. I want to thank you in advance for your participation. A favorite quote of mine. Winston Churchill said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. The question I have for you at this point of our journey together is, do you have the courage to continue? And if not, are you willing to cultivate it so you can continue? I hope so. I appreciate you showing up to listen today and in the future. New episodes are released twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays. As a subscriber, the newest episodes will be in your feed by 1 a.m. Pacific time, Plus, you won't miss out on any extra episodes that I create with special guests. Certainly a good reason to subscribe. And if you've asked me a question, I hope that you'll come back to hear my response and that it's of benefit to you. Remember, I love answering questions, so please ask away for the Thursday episodes. Whether you're learning from my podcast episodes or live videos or working with me directly, you are in my world and I'm here to serve your needs. So be sure to reach out and get your needs met. It's up to you to take action here so that things can change for you. The two action steps to get your needs met are, ask Dr. B and get your questions answered directly on a podcast episode. Answer the quick little six question survey so I can know what your number one struggle or frustration is right now and be of service. You'll find the links for both action steps on my website. Do it for yourself today. I appreciate you showing up to listen today and in the future. I have some special episodes in the works for you. They'll be coming soon. 
For now, the new episodes are released on Mondays and Thursdays. And as a subscriber, the newest episode will be in your feed by 1 a.m. Pacific time. Plus, you won't miss out on any of the extra special episodes that I create with guests, as well as some other different types of episodes. Certainly a good reason to subscribe. Perhaps make a date with yourself to listen to each podcast episode so you hear your questions answered if you've asked any of me. Or just enjoy all the episodes where I'll be talking about such compelling topics as making friends, seeing the path, making a plan, and more in-depth separate episodes as a spin-off from the episode 13's multi-level topic. I'm here for you and will continue to tailor both the Ask Dr. B and regular episodes to meet your needs. To do an even better job of that, I'd love to know what you need to know or would just enjoy hearing my point of view on. So if you enjoyed today's episode or any of the other episodes, please share this podcast show with your friends and family, as well as rate the show. And if you'd like to do a little more, write a thoughtful review on iTunes so I know that I'm meeting your needs. It doesn't have to be anything lengthy, just a line or two of how the podcast is helping you, if it is. I love hearing from you and learning how the podcast show is benefiting you and those you care about. It means a lot to me to know that your life is getting a little bit better every time we get together. So that's about it for today. If you want to participate in my quick little survey, ask me a question, receive periodic updates on new happenings with Dr. B, learn about my innovative program, adventures and achievement, or just download your show notes. You can do all of that on my website, as well as learn about other services and resources. That is, if that's of interest to you. Thanks for listening. Until the next time, bye for now. Thanks for your undivided attention. If you're hungry to make positive changes in your life, head over to drbarbaracohen.com and see how Dr. B can help you today. Whether you love making changes with one-to-one attention and community support or on your own with self-study or could benefit from coaching or psychotherapy, you'll find all the information right there at drbarbaracohen.com.